see if you can close it out. And that is the trophy for Coop the Musketeers. And for the four Musketeers who this stadium actually was built for in the early 30s after they were successful in Davis Cup play. Merci. And then Merci. for the French aviator, Roland Davis. Proud is doing uh, the wave. Maybe the last opportunity they might have to do that. As Miguel serves for the match. S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. Merci. And that's exactly what we're talking about. Just standing and delivering with that off forehand or forehand down the line. That's the that shot that just opens the court up for him. And in two hours and 18 minutes, Rafael Nadal becomes only the second man in the history of this championship to win here at Roland Garros five times. Nadal. The only man to have surpassed that and is Bjorn Borg with six. And he wasn't even had to make, he wasn't made to work for the last game, but a well-deserved victory, fellas. Well, yeah, you know, I, I get the feeling that this victory was a year in the making. You know, he was stung last year. He considered this tournament his own, this court his own, and that loss to Sodling, it really shattered the latter part of his 2009 season. And I believe that he had nothing in his mind since that day he lost to Robin Sodling and getting his title back. Look at Uncle Tony. He made a couple of comments in the press after Rafa lost. He felt like the French crowd didn't appreciate Rafa's efforts here. He was stung too. And, uh, you know, to come back here basically undefeated over the whole play court season, didn't lose a set in this tournament. I mean, really an extraordinary effort. Have a look at the emotion. This is incredible. 
Well, he's certainly gone back to the basics that has made him this great, renowned clay quarter. Just not going for too many first serves. Very high, a high amount of first serves, and we're just relying upon his heart and his will to retrieve the ball all through this tournament. Unbelievable, though. You, you, people think, hey, he looks cool, calm, and collected the same with Federer, but you've got to be an emotional person to play this game to be a champion. Yeah, he, I mean, it looked like he was sobbing into his towel there, didn't he? I mean, he was absolutely he overcome. Was. And uh, so we just see this. This is like the tip of the pyramid. You know, we see the match and we see the great tennis that he played. But what about all the hours of rehab, all the hours of training, you know, to play the kind of tennis that he played over the course of the clay court season? I mean, that's what we don't get to see. And that's why I guess there's this outpouring of emotion. He doesn't take it for granted, does he? Week yeah. after week, match after match, he puts the same effort into practice. And uh, that's why he plays these big points so incredibly well. And the big question after last year was the knees. You go and you, you rehab those. You don't know how much longer you're going to be doing. If you're going to be able to play, whether you're going to come back, how are you going to come back when you get out here and you play five sets? It's been remarkable performance. But, you know, we talk about, you know, Mark, you were just saying, you know, the effort that he puts in. And that's, I mean, I, I love Nadal. I think he's great for the game because he really cares. And uh, every time he steps out on the court, he just, there's nothing but his best. I mean, it's almost like he's got a responsibility to himself in the game to give the best of himself. And he's, he's humble, he respects his opponents, and I think he's terrific for tennis. He, he does. He never disses any opponent when he's asked to comment about the, the next round that, you, you know, how do you expect to play? And he said, I have to try my very, very best. That is how he approaches each and every match. This man, Robin Sodling, he's had a terrific tournament. He can hold his head high. He, I think he was a little bit done towards the end of this match. I think the last one took uh, quite a bit out of him against uh, Burdich in the semi-finals. And uh, again, we use that word relentless. And the, the first set was the close set. The first set was 4-all. It got to 4-all. After that first set, then you felt that Soderling was on the back foot most of the time. Well, it was good tennis, wasn't it? I mean, the, the first set and a half was really good tennis. And uh, Nadal's retrieving was just remarkable. And you get the feeling that if he just could have got a couple of those break points early, Soderling, he may have settled down and life could have been a bit easy for him. I don't think he was going to win today, though. I think Nadal had made up his mind about a year ago that he was going to get this trophy back. That's the Queen of Spain. Looking on. Uh, they're just about ready for the presentation. You can see how they get organised here so well. And Nadal will go up and uh, ex exchange pleasantries there. Congratulations. Always good to stay in. Good with the moniker, yeah, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. Huge sporting figure in his country, Rafael Nadal. As I say, Queen of Spain and the King of Clay get to meet at the end of the day. Well, I've never seen that. I've never seen Nadal reduced to tears. He didn't really let us see it. He stuck his head in the towel, but uh, just an insight into the man. That yep. Maybe we think we know him, but uh, what's going on underneath? He seemed all calm on the surface, but plenty on, plenty going on. Look these underneath. kids. I love the fact these ball kids take the trophies out and place them up there, and uh, a lot of these kids train, as we've seen them do their practice sessions, and every day they do a run through around the grounds here. A lot of them play tennis. They have millions of kids registered in France, tennis players, and uh, that's why they've got such a great junior system in this country at the moment. Ceremony, the remise de récompense du simple métier des internationaux de France 2010, the World Ceremony of the 2010 French Open. Les trophées seront remis par le président de la Fédération française de tennis, M. Jean Gachassin, accompagné du champion qui a disputé ici quatre finales. On a remporté deux en 1959 et en 1960, cette dernière il y a exactement 50 ans, M. Nicolas Pietrangeli. Nicolas Pietrangeli won this title here in 1959 and 1960 and was going for three in a row and he lost in five sets to his good friend Manolo Santana, the great Spaniard. Just showing us some highlights on the big screen there. Nicola Pietrangeli back in the day. Looks like slow motion in comparison to today's tennis, but he was the expert 
out of the drop shot, we call it to Transley. Still looks good, looks healthy, he's a big man. Finaliste des Internationaux de France 2010, pour la deuxième fois en finale, Robin Sonderling. 